It is my first time in Boston. I'm excited about being here. I didn't know what to expect. Energy's been good, it's been amazing. It seems like everyone is, as a collective, they are excited to be here. We've been talking about the marathon for months. It's here, 24 hours away. Happy to be here. The energy in Boston right now is crazy. As soon as I woke up this morning, just saw people running everywhere. Like, you, you can feel the energy. And I think it's dope how the city shuts down for this marathon. Like, school is closed, people don't have to go to work. Like, it's, it's a big deal. So, and for this to be the 128th year of the Boston Marathon, this is epic. There's a lot of electricity, there's a lot of unity, there's a lot of support, just in general, just, you know, people in like restaurants and stores just saying good luck and everything. So, you know, the vibe is pretty cool. I think that there are a lot of folks that have come here for different reasons. Um, and to each person, that reason is, you know, one of the most important pieces in their life. My personal history with Boston uh, runs back to college. I would come up here and visit friends. I've never been here, though, for the marathon. It's held something of a sacred space for me because I knew that this is kind of the holy grail of all marathons. And as we've been knocking down um, each marathon, the end goal was always to make Boston happen somehow, some way. So there's only four of you here this week. Can you tell us what happened Quiet? So our brother Quiet was unable to make it. Um, we're disappointed, he's disappointed, but in this case, he was just a victim of overtraining, doing just too much and too close to the race, put himself in a situation where he couldn't couldn't participate. I know he's down about it and, and it and it sucks because, you know, we've been training for this since January and here we are. And he got hurt, you know, two days prior to, you know, uh getting on a plane to come to Boston. So I, I feel bad, man, but that's the beauty of this. It's like, you know, when one man fall off, the other man step up and we still go on, on hold it down. And the goal is to is to finish this this marathon and, and represent for all of us, not only Yusuf, but all of us. Going to the expo this morning, it was an interesting setup. There's so many runners, man. There's thousands and thousands of people there. Once you're at the expo and you pick up your bib, you see your bib, then you know those, those miles are here. There's no more of those miles are coming. Those miles are here and it's just time to lock in. Emotionally right now, I feel I feel calm, man. It's like the calm before the storm. Um, the nerves hasn't really hit me yet. I think it's going to hit me tomorrow when I'm in my carousel, um, when it's time for, for the race to start. But right now, I'm, I'm just taking it all in, man. You know, this is a, a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm, I'm beyond thankful for it. Being in Boston, running the marathon for the first time is exciting. I don't think that anyone really recognizes how much work they've done and how much they've looked forward to this until they kind of get on site. And until you're at the expo, you're picking up your, your materials to run, you're starting to set out the day, the times that you need to wake up, the things that you need to have on you. You can prep and prep, but it still is something of a, a slap in the face as soon as you get here. The question always comes up, like, why are you here? Like, why are you running? Is this your thing? And then I share the story about me and the crew and Yusuf, and people are just like, wow, that's that's deep. But you know, it's been it's been 10 years and it's not like we're it's not like we're used to it. Like it's it still feels fresh, but it's also like, you know, we're literally out here doing things that we would that we said we would never do, um, all because of you. So um, you know, it's a special feeling to be here because I, I said I'd never do it, but I also said I would never run a half marathon. I also said I would never run, period, and, and so we're here. The way I think about Boston, you know, I actually think it's a privilege, um, you know, to run it. I mean, there's people all over the world that uh, struggle to get a qualifying time just to be here. So the fact that I'm here, I'm running, and I'm doing it in my brother's honor is just a massive level of importance. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm glad everybody is in a great mood. This is turning out to be kind of a, a ritual, the, the pre-night pasta prep. I'm happy uh. to be here with you. For real, for real, how are you guys feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm just ready to get it over with. Mm -hmm. When I was at the expo today, I mean, I'm just looking around. I see a million people, and my thoughts are, if all these people can do it, I can do it. Absolutely. No problem. Absolutely. So, Ms. Anita, how does it, 
be able to see Yusuf's homeboys continuing on with his memory or legacy, or how does it feel just witnessing everything? It's awesome how you guys keep Yusuf's spirit alive and in turn keep me lifted. It's a great feeling, I'm proud of you all. And I'm just happy to be able to share this memory with you. Austin, it's on and popping, baby. Let's get it, let's go. The, the dope thing about our circle is that all of us know each other's family. So like Danae's family is here. Um, my best friend Telly's coming here. My girlfriend Tanisha is here. Yusuf's mom is here. Uh, my sister is here. So it's like everybody's here to support us and for them to take time out of their busy schedules to travel to Boston just to be at the finish line to say congratulations, you guys did it. It's just super dope, man. My wife, Ashley, uh, my son, Liam, and my daughter, Zuri, are here, planning to cheer somewhere along the course. Um, it's probably uh, what I'm absolutely the most excited about. I think if Yusuf was here right now, there's a crazy duality to his life because outside of the competitive space, he was very compassionate and empathetic and loving, and you know he was one of our best friends. But then when it got into competitive spaces, there was a no-nonsense type of approach. So not only would he be here running with us, but I think that his words to us as far as you know advice would be just to go get it done. In a lot of ways, the work is already done. You're here. Now it's just time to go out there and perform. Mentally, I, I've just been taking it all in. The way you view things and the way you process things when you're running is how you run. So I'm just trying to be happy, just trying to be in a good mood, uh, laughing and joking, because um, I, I don't want to run angry. Because when you run angry, it is almost like your body tenses up. So I've just been mentally saying, hey, Fred, stay relaxed. Uh, I am happy that I get to do the Boston Marathon on the 10th year anniversary of Yusuf's death. Let's get this party started. Oh, those miles are here. We've been prepping and training for this for the last four or five months. Ain't nothing but to do it now. This thing is four hours we're done. Four hours. The goal, three hours for shade. Three hours for shade. Four hours for the rest of us. But we're just going to finish. The goal is to Three on you? Three on shade. I'll give them a three for team. Hey, I'm here for the team. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, Lord, we come to you humbly. Uh, thank you for the opportunity of getting us here safely. Uh, we ask that you stick Hi. with us through mile one to 26. Uh, keep us strong, keep us uh, alive, keep us uh, energetic. And um, please let us put our best performance together as a whole and we do this for our better. Uh, these, these things you say. Amen. 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 You know, the boys are in the race. We're all going through the same thing at the same time, and we'll see each other at the finish line. I'm gonna finish. Um, I might not finish the fastest, but you know, I'm gonna finish all intact. Mentally, I, I, I put in my mind that I'm gonna do four, six miles, and one 3K. So I'm just gonna break it up. So I, I was just like, yo, hey, Fred, you're almost there. And just imagine once you cross that finish line, you don't have to run. At that halfway point, I'm gonna be excited to see my, my friends and my family at the finish line. You've made it to mile 18. I mean, there's so many people that will never even run over five miles. So the fact that you're on mile 18 and you know you're almost done, it's rewarding, honestly. It feels good. I hate that I'm first place under the conditions. However, first place is first place, baby. You know what I'm saying? We were, we were trying to pull back and be chill. And then, yeah, my knee couldn't handle it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was like, at that point it was like, just don't knock out. We were running, me and Fred were at like mile, it was at like 25 and I almost fell down. Almost, my knee went like, click, and I was like, oh. I just wanted to finish. 
I have nothing but respect for the Boston Marathon. The heartbreak here, head off to you. Got it. Got it. I'm exhausted. But I'm happy. Um, never thought, never thought I would have did anything like this. Never thought I'd be a part of anything like this. It's amazing. It's a lot of, a lot of different feelings going on at one time. It's amazing. Are in the middle. Great job. Oh. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All the pain. All the suffering. It was worth it, though. It was though, all wasn't for it? this right here. Yep. Thank you, ladies. Attending these races, attending the marathons especially, I've done a few by myself, but I've done most of them with a group and, and usually this group. So I think that the reward isn't the same at the end if it's not shared with a group of friends that also went through a similar experience. Um, we've been doing this for so long that we have found the group that consistently shows up for, for one another. The love and the ceremony and tradition that we've created in the past 10 years is precious. Yusuf was a giver, and receiving this type of love, this magnitude of love, I know would have made him feel some kind of way. Nothing but love.